So we finally got it, Cozy Blanket is out on the iPad, so if you want to do retopology and not leave the iPad, then this is the app for you. So let's take a look at how we retop with this amazing new tool. So Cozy Blanket is a retopology tool that you'll find on the iPad. We've waited for it for quite a few months now. It was announced and everyone was getting really excited, certainly in the Nomad and Forger community, because it means that you can retopologize your models on an iPad without leaving and going to a desktop. So if you're new to this kind of thing, what is retopology? Well, sometimes you, you need to have clean, low polygon good edge flow or good laid out polygons for your workflow you need it for animation for games you need it for um certainly if you're going to go into any uh, experience kind of of, of development and um, things things like ar um and any kind of of wherever there's a need for a clean low polygon mesh this is the kind of tool that you use now you can use it for um making a clean mesh to sculpt on so th there's two ways of using it so and I, and I and i do that a lot with with my workflow so we're going to have a look at the basics of the tools there is an x an add-on you can get the um uh, i think there's an 80 pounds add-on which is a retopology pack which i'll talk about in a moment um, but you know it's it's quite functional without having to pay that so let's have a quick look so here it is open there's a, a little default froggy in there and it shows you some of the geometry that's stuck to the frog so this has already been made for you when you open it up so we'll have a go on one of our models but if you look at the top left you get some information about uh, cozy blanket load the startup document which is this froggy uh, left-handed mode is is for me and then you've got some interaction uh, options to change it so multi-touch hold apple pencil hold um, so it's up to you whichever you prefer so try them and see which one works for you you got the website and the documentation and you've got here the um you can, you can actually repeat the introduction uh, slideshow and i'll just tap that because the the slideshow teaches you all of this that I'm about to tell you. So in theory, you don't even need me. So it's so well done. You can just literally, you know, just follow this, follow the introduction and you'll learn everything that I'm about to show you. So come out of that. You've got undo and redo top left here. You've got stats here at the bottom. How many edges, points, faces are there in the model? Um, so come up to the top right and we've got this one which is important this is your symmetry button so if you're working on a symmetrical model you really need to be making sure that's switched on or you won't get geometry on the the opposite side input um to import and export is there and and the, and the, the file accessor um these down the side i'll talk to you about them as we go into one of our models because these are the tools we use all the time um, so let's switch to one of our models uh, from Nomad and see what that looks like. So here's Hellboy that we'd one of our early Nomad models. So let's just have a quick look at what um, basically what the, the, the core tools are. So the first thing you want to do is draw some geometry on top of this high poly mesh. So you literally just draw a square and a square appears. That's a quad. If you want to move it, you just double tap on any of the corners and that, that gives you the ability to move the points around. So e each corner has a point or a vertex. Um, so if you want to split it, you just draw through it and that splits it into two and then you can tap and move that around. Um, if you find that you're getting a, a point where you can't get it to move, then just angle your model around. You sometimes get, it gets in a little funk if you leave it at a certain angle. But as you can see, you can move that around and you can also tap on an edge and you can move your edges as well. If you run a line through the middle, it'll split it and then you can double tap on that edge like that and you can slide the edges. So that's quite useful. So that's the basics of how you make uh, geometry. You just draw squares, really. Uh, it's quite simple. Um, if you're in a corner like I was there, so if you're in like this, you just draw a square like that. If you're something like this and you want a, a, a quad here and you just go up, down and across, uh, up across and down and if you want this one it's just it's just two like this now i've messed up there as you can see and let's just show you what happened so it made two by mistake there so to undo just double tap or tap on the screen with two fingers and then do it back again and it'll do it hopefully it'll fix it this time there you go so that's filled now if you happen to do a triangle like that 
you could do two triangles by mistake sometimes and you might want to move this one to this one and snap it so all you do is you draw a line to that one and then back and that snaps it so that can be useful like for example here you might want to do that where and then you might want to snap this one to another one over here so you might want to do that. I mean, you're not going to want to do that, but the, the, the option is there to do it and you could fill that in there. Um, and what you could also do then is just clean up and make quads again by just wiggling with the line. You literally wiggle across the edge. Oops, just wiggle across the edge and it deletes it. So if you are, if you are getting an error like that, just move it to a point where the line's clearly visible and you can keep drawing and you can keep doing like so and if you want to keep drawing like this if you want to do um say for example you've come along here and you just want to do a block so let's fill that in there if you want to do a block of three here you can just come up from this one across and down to that one and it gives you three or you could go across here and that gives you two or you could go here and it gives you all of them so it is quite efficient don't forget you can draw a line through it whoops like this and then you can tap on this edge um oh sorry the the, the next edge in oops don't seem to want to do it double tap on it and it moves like that you can't do it as easily here you, it doesn't seem to want to go out so i don't know whether you can do that but if i don't know whether you can do that but what you have got are these on the side here which we haven't looked at so these are your move and relax buttons so this is how you can move things along maybe add extras like that and then use relax to tighten it and smooth it and that basically just tightens it to the surface like so. You can see how much cleaner and how much more relaxed it is. You can move it quite a long way. Don't go too far or you'll get, a, like you know, you can push it too far and, and it'll snap to a surface that's not not um, in a good place. Or like this model's actually got errors underneath. So we're, we're actually working on a bit of a compromised model there already. So that's pretty much all of the basics. You can carry on and, and, and do, you know, you could fill most of your topology in by just learning it and just doing those those few tools. But what you might want to do is do a few extras. So you might want to do an edge loop and then color it. So say you've done something like this. Say you've got um, a loop like this that does, um, let's just do one more there. This is for some eyes. Um, still didn't do it right then. Like so. So that's a loop around an eye, for example. And you could split that like that, like you normally do there. And you could relax it and smooth it and, and move it and all the things we've looked at already. But what you might want to do is colour that loop. So basically all you have to do is draw a line there like that. So you go up on the, the, the one that's 90 degrees to the direction you want it. So for example, if I wanted it in the outer blue one now, I'd just come like that. And don't forget the other ways how we split it. So one way we'll colour it like so, and one way we'll split it. So just you've got to remember the, the distinction of, wh of which way you're doing it. But that's quite a useful tool. Uh, not on a shoulder, on a Hellboy, obviously, because you would want to do it on an eye. But at least you've, you've proved that you can do it there. If you want to delete, there's a there's a sequence you've got to learn, and it's this. So just watch. It's up, across, and down, and that just deletes. So up, across, and down, up, across, and down. So that gets rid of that, no problem at all. And you can squiggle like this as well, and you can get rid of edges as well. So it's messy in here, so I won't do any more. I'll tap to, to do it. But if you've come to a point where, for example, you want a triangle here instead of that, you could you could try... Uh, sorry, if you've got a triangle uh, corner to corner like that and you don't want that edge, you can just wiggle and get rid of it like that. So that's quite a useful one. So let's have a look at one of our, um, let's do a time lapse of a full head um, that's come out of Nomad. Um, and we'll just use one of the heads we've used in a previous video. Um, we'll knock it down, we'll decimate it down a little bit in Nomad first so it's a little bit more handleable. And then we'll pop it in here and have a look at it and, and see how it looks. So this is the head that we made it quite a few videos ago now um, and it's it's a very simple straightforward bust uh, it's a fawn so it's got some horns so with retopology um, I quite often start by popping in those loops so I've just done a, a loop around the eye and now around the nostril and then it'll be the mouth and then one around the outer part of the ear 
And as much as you don't really need me to teach you these tools, they do a great job of that. The, the, the guy, the, the, the chap that wrote Cozy Blanket has explained it so well. What I want to talk about as we're watching this is about retopology and, and what, what the, um, the point of it really is. So I, I'm looking to make edge loops. And they're these loops that you're seeing on screen now that go all the way around, a contiguous edge loop around a thing. So around the horn, around the eye, around the nostril, um, around the ear. The reason that you do those continuous loops is there's lots of reasons. One, it makes them easier to select in other programs and you can make selection sets that are a loop. You can select loops. So in lots of programs like Blender and ZBrush, you can isolate and actually do the selection with those those rings. It's much easier than a uh, flow that goes off at different angles. If you ever want to animate, it's much, much easier to, to work with loops. Um, and it's an industry standard, really. When you're a junior modeler, you'll, you'll be taught about edge loops um, almost on, on every occasion. There's less in game, uh, more so these days because they're quite high polygon models in game, but it's a little bit less important. And certainly with, with what you're seeing with me here, there's two things um, that aspirationally I always try and do. Uh, one is try and keep the polygons to be square. So they're quads most of the time, but what you want is you don't want them too stretched out. So wherever possible, and it is only aspirational because sometimes you have to do it, they're not too long and thin. So always try and keep them uh, as close to a square as you can. That really helps for subdivision where you're, you're going higher res and, and smoothing. Uh, it renders better if it's, if it's subdividing with squares. It's just, it works better for the, the algorithm in, inside a lot of programs. And the other thing is we minimize the triangles. So there's, there's sometimes contention about that because it's quite an old fashioned um, uh, way of looking at things because a lot of game models are full of triangles so again it's just aspirational um, a lot of times when I'm I'm looking to get models made if I've got oh, like a thousand polygons and they're all quads I know I've got two thousand triangles so there's predictability that's one good thing two you've got that uh, f the fact that triangles don't always subdivide as well as quads so you, you're just taking out any possibility of having problems and, and, it, and if you do have um, triangles in there try and two things one you can hide them so you can when we look at the ear you can see that I'd put triangles in the ear or behind the ear or under a hairline or something like that and two don't have them on a corner or an edge because um, if you're going to deform something like a cheek um, or, or the edge of a lip if you've got a triangle there there's always that chance that it might deform and just not render well or cause a problem so just just again they're rules of of modeling um, and you can break those rules but you need to know why they're there in the first place. You just saw me use the relax there. So you lay down the whole piece or a big chunk of the piece, and then you just use the relax tool to smooth it down. Um, and if you don't do that, it's not a huge problem. It looks probably looks worse and doesn't look as, as good. You can see there I've got, a, I've, I've got a triangle in there. So I basically just um, th then uh, snap that together uh, and, make it, uh, and make it back into a quad. So they're, they're the rules that you, you want to work to uh, as much as you possibly can. Now this is where it gets a little bit uh, tricky. Um, I made a bit of a mistake here. You can see how faceted that ear is and that's because I decimated it too low. And what that means is sometimes it's not, re it's not really respecting the shape that I wanted it to and the, the polygons from the retop stick through it more. So you just, it, you, I've caused myself problems there. So I, sh I should have um, not decimated it quite as low. Now you can't see it in the, in the time lapse as easily, but I, re I know that it was a problem uh, while I was doing it. So just, just be aware, have a good look around your model to make sure that it's not too faceted or too low. So um, the, the ear can be complex. You don't need um, as many um, really set loops on an ear because you're not really ever going to animate an ear. So you'd need that loop around it, certainly to help isolate it. Um, but, and you can, put, you can hide triangles in ears and things like that. It's a great place to hide you know problems if you if you can't be bothered doing full quads um but um yeah even on, even on a creature like this the the ear is a great place to you know to, to to do those kind of um where you want to end a flow perhaps or just or just hide something in that little recess as the ear tucks in um one thing i noticed while i was using it here it you know occasionally it can get a little bit um 
on a thin area like the thin bit at the end of the ear you can see through it sometimes um, and that does cause um, some issues. I get that when I'm retopologizing in programs like uh, Cinema 4D with some scripts. I find that, that, that they don't have that quite right. Um, and even ZBrush, sometimes I find I, I, I get uh, a similar sort of error in, in there. But as you can see, I've just filled in the ear um, and gone as, as, as close to a proper flow as I can. Um, and, and there are, you know, you can see there where there's some pinching and some bits where I just haven't done the model particularly well. But it's done anyway. So um, I wasn't going to do the horns. They were separate objects, but I, I just thought I'd just um, patch them up like this. A um, couple of ways you can do it. You can you can move that, that um, outer edge up and then split the ones behind it. You can slide it up, I think. Um, I have had trouble with sliding. As I mentioned earlier in the video, it, the video, it's not worked particularly well all of the time. Well, that's probably more about me just learning it. And you can see there how the, the, the grey model is sticking through. That's because I was extending the, the, the polygons into those long, thin polygons. And that's not always the best way, really. Um, so you can see there, you just go all the way up to the end and then um, you just seal it off and just cap it off on the end. And that, that gives you a, the, the, the complete model. Now, once you've done this um, and you've got everything right, I didn't go inside the mouth because there's teeth in there. And I didn't go all the way inside the eyes. But if you want to do a complete fully watertight model, you would probably just pop in the model without those parts in. So leave the eyeballs behind and leave the teeth behind and the gums behind and just, just seal the model uh, in the background there. You can see me using the, um, the relax tool quite a lot there. So th there's an example of what I was just saying. Uh, I'm just going into the eye now and I could easily seal that up completely. I just added extra edge loops um, and just making sure there's some detail right into the where, where the eyeball is going to sit. And that's pretty much it. That's that's the whole head done. You, you know, again, you can go in, like I said, you can go in behind um, if you don't have the teeth in there like I did, you can go in behind the, the mouth. Um, your loops are good. You can see all the loops. Um, there's a little bit left to do on the end there, but that's probably all you need to see. And here's the model in um, Nomad, back into Nomad just to have a look at it. So again, you would want to finish it a little bit more complete than this. But at that point, you've got a model that you can project onto. Um, I generally use ZBrush for that kind of work. So we'll, we'll have to have another video and chat about that at a later stage. Um, and I also quite often take it in and just start my sculpt on it if, if you know, if, 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 that, that that's something that I uh, you know I've, I've aimed to do. I did that with the with the Tyrannosaurus course. So hopefully you've got a good idea of how I do it, and uh, by all means just go out there and have a go. So I hope you're enjoying these videos, and if you are, please give us a thumbs up because it helps us to get in front of other people who like this sort of content. And if you're giving us a thumbs up, then why not subscribe to the channel, and we can let you know when we upload new content, which is every week.